How would you describe Megan Fox? A hottie from Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that nobody has seen anywhere else? Is she a new sex symbol to replace Angelina Jolie? Is she an idol of young girls in the LGBTQ community? All these characteristics, one way or another, are really related to Megan. But what is she really like? Today on the Biographer channel, we will talk about what she had to go through to accept her appearance, how the future actress was subjected to cruel bullying at school, and why she called Michael Bay the real Hitler. And let's figure out if Megan has a chance to resume her acting career. Are you ready? Then let's start. There you go. <clears throat> Megan Denise Fox was born on May 16, 1986, in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Her father, Franklin Thomas Fox, was a parole officer, and her mother, Gloria Darlene, was in real estate. Megan's childhood can't exactly be called carefree. When she turned three, her parents divorced. Soon, the mother remarried, after which the family moved to Port St. Lucie, Florida. Megan and her older sister, Christy, were strictly raised. The mother and stepfather, Tony Tenacio, adhered to strict morals and controlled the girls in everything. My mother made me wear a dark wig when I was two. She started dyeing my hair dark when I was about five because she didn't like my blonde hair. My stepfather was a strict Protestant. Megan was forbidden to bring friends home and date guys. The result of such a strict upbringing was Megan's panic attacks, which were expressed, as a rule, in outbursts of uncontrolled aggression. Megan decided to become an actress at the age of three. Then she watched the movie The Wizard of Oz. The character named Dorothy so shocked the imagination of the girl that she decided to act in the movie. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. At the age of five, Megan began attending a dance class in Kingston. At school, she also participated in a drama club, a choir, and was engaged in swimming. At the age of 10, after moving to St. Petersburg, Florida, Fox did not give up on dancing and continued to work hard. Already at the age of 13, Megan began her journey in the modeling business and even received several awards at the 99th Year Talent Contest in South Carolina. In parallel, Megan attended a Christian high school, but the constant ridicule and bullying of classmates led to the fact that the future actress makes a choice in favor of distance learning. Now Fox calmly answers journalists' questions regarding bullying at school and high school. She had to have a lunch in the bathroom to avoid being pelted with ketchup packets. The actress believes that the problem was not at all in her appearance, but that she always got along better with boys. I was 15 and everybody knew that my aspiration in life was to become an actress, recalls Megan. One girl came to school on Halloween in a black leather cat suit and everyone thought she was Catwoman. She answered, no, I am Megan Fox. She was making fun of me. I didn't say anything to her. I was really shy. I've always gotten along better with boys. At the age of 17, Megan decided that she couldn't go on like that, dropped out of school, and moved to Los Angeles. Megan's acting career began in 2001. Even before moving, she made her debut in the film Holiday in the Sun with the Olsen sisters, where she played the role of a spoiled beauty who ruined the lives of the main characters. The Olsen sisters at that time had a large fan base, and despite the fact that the film was released immediately on DVD, it had a good effect on the career of an aspiring actress. By the age of 16, Fox already had a good resume of several roles. Among them was a cameo role in the Swedish soap opera Ocean Avenue, and an appearance in the sitcom What I Like About You with Amanda Bynes. In 2003, the actress got into the action movie Bad Boys 2. Her collaboration with Michael Bay, who directed the film, began with a small, almost unnoticeable role of a girl dancing in a club. The year 2004 for Megan was marked by a full-fledged debut in a feature film, in the musical comedy Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. She played a minor role of Carla Santini, the rival of Lindsay Lohan's character. That year, the actress appeared in even more sitcoms. On CBS, it was Two and a Half Men with Charlie Sheen. On the Warner Brothers channel, she acted in the short live series The Help, and on ABC, the actress received a prominent role in the sitcom Hope and Faith, where, replacing Nicole Paggy, she played the role of Sidney Shinesky. In 2005, for the role in Hope and Faith, Megan received a nomination for the Best Supporting Actress according to the Young Artist Award. During the filming of the series, Megan began dating actor Brian Austin Green. 18-year-old Megan fell in love with Brian, who was 30 at the time, at first sight. For several reasons, Green didn't take their romance seriously. 
Firstly, at that time, he was going through a difficult breakup with his colleague on the TV series Beverly Hills 90210, Vanessa Marcille, and was morally not ready for a new, serious relationship. Secondly, he was confused by a serious age difference. According to Megan herself, Green did not immediately decide to begin a relationship with her precisely because he considered her too young and immature. But Megan, with her determination and perseverance, quickly convinced Green to change his mind. Megan was very young when we met, and I decided that anything between us will not. Fortunately, she was very insistent. There was no trace of Green's doubts when he saw how well Megan coped with the role of mother. She became a true friend to Cassius, Brian's son by Vanessa Marcille. Later, Fox admitted more than once that Brian became her first and greatest love. In 2006, the actor proposed to Meghan and she agreed. The couple was enthusiastically preparing for the upcoming wedding, so there was one of the most beautiful couples in Hollywood. But back to Meghan's creative successes. Real success came to Fox in 2007 after a role in Michael Bay's blockbuster Transformers. Meghan's partners on the set were Shia LaBeouf, Josh Duhamel, Tyrese Gibson, John Turturro, and many others. Steven Spielberg was a fan of the eponymous comic book and toy series from Hasbro, and having become the executive producer of the film in 2004, he made an invaluable contribution to the project. Largely thanks to Spielberg, a script was managed to write, touching on the topics of growing up and responsibility for your actions. Michael Bay, who at first refused to take the director's chair, referring to the fact that it was a stupid toy movie, still wanted to work with Spielberg and after visiting the Hasbro office and getting acquainted with the Transformers universe, decided to become part of the team. Producer Spielberg did not pay any actor more than $70,000, promising high fees in subsequent films. Young, hungry actors under the leadership of Bay were able to open up to the fullest. The film became a real hit at the box office. With a budget of about $200 million, the blockbuster became the fifth highest grossing film of 2007 and collected $709 million worldwide. The success of the picture was by no means accidental. A team of 80 people worked on the special effects of the film. Visually, the film looked really revolutionary for its time. All robot transformations in the film were carefully calculated mathematically. Attentive viewers could understand where each component part of the robot went when it was transformed back into a vehicle. Such attention of creators to minor details is not often seen in modern blockbusters. The role of the tanned beauty Michaela Baines brought the actress real fame. Fox was nominated for an MTV Movie Award in the category, Breakthrough of the Year, and also received three Teen Choice Awards nominations. Such a career leap allowed the actress to shamelessly add a zero to her future fees. Megan signed a contract for two sequels of Transformers at once. The actress herself modestly evaluates her work in this film. I'm terrible at it. It's my first real movie, and it's not honest and not realistic. She recalls, The movie wasn't bad. I just wasn't proud about what I did and director Michael Bay seemed to the actress too demanding and strict. He doesn't like really skinny actresses. He's been traumatized by them for some reason in the past. So I always try to put on eight to 10 pounds before filming, and I'm always the fattest I've ever been when making a Transformers movie. After becoming popular, Fox began to regularly grace the pages of men's magazines. In 2008, FHM Magazine named the actress the sexiest woman alive. If Megan's career was on the rise, then on the personal front, everything was not so rosy. The relationship between Green and Fox after the engagement began to deteriorate. Due to busy work schedules, the lovers simply did not have time for each other. At first, the paparazzi suspected something was wrong, noticing Megan without an engagement ring, and after a while, it turned out that the couple had decided to break up. After breaking up with Green, Fox had a brief affair with her Transformers partner Shia LaBeouf. At that time, the couple did not comment on their relationship in any way, but later, Fox admitted to the media that at that time, she was really in love with LaBeouf. I would confirm that it was romantic. I love him. I've never been really quiet about that. I love him. Megan and Brian got back together 10 months later. The separation helped them understand that they could not live without each other. The actor, for the second time, made a marriage proposal to his beloved, to which she again agreed. In 2008, Megan joined the cast of the British comedy How to Lose Friends and Alienate People with Simon Pegg and Kirsten Dunst. The film received mostly negative reviews, and despite a good box office in the home country, it was not a commercial success in the USA. The appearance in Thomas Decker's drama Whore, which did not hit the big screens at all, wasn't the most useful role for Megan's career. The actress signed up for both pictures even before the success of Transformers. This, in part, explains the participation of a rising star 
in such mediocre projects. In 2009, in the movie Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Fox, as expected, again played the role of Michaela Baines. Michael Bay's demands again seemed too high to the actress. In an interview with the British edition of The Telegraph, Megan said, The director of the movie Transformers is a real Hitler. The actress claimed that Bay was making her gain weight again and get the right tan. As it turned out later, after this interview, the actress was fired from the project by order of the film's producer Steven Spielberg. However, according to Megan, she was not fired at all, but she herself left Transformers to participate in other projects, considering such an attitude to herself unacceptable. Director Michael Bay, in turn, refuted Fox's words and admitted that he had always tolerated Megan's antics, but that time, she overdid it. You know the Hitler thing, Steven said. Fire her right now. Bay said at a press conference, It's hard to say right now in this situation which side the truth is on. What do you think? Share your opinion in the comments. In the third part of Transformers, Fox, as expected, did not take part. She was replaced by British model Rosie Huntington Whiteley. During this same period, a group of criminals known as the Bling Ring robbed the house of Megan's boyfriend, Brian Austin Green. This group in the period from 2008 to 2009 was engaged in robberies of celebrities' houses. Their victims were more than 50 houses. By the way, Paris Hilton suffered the most from the hands of scoundrels. They broke into her house several times and robbed her of about $3 million. But it wasn't just scandals that marked the year for Megan. The first, after the first and second parts of Transformers, the film in which the actress played the main role was the black comedy Jennifer's Body, based on the script of Oscar-winning Diablo Cody. Megan's performance was well received by the public and the film itself, though not immediately gained cult status in the femme community. The scriptwriter of the film justified the low box office with an incorrect advertising campaign, saying that the studio was looking for its audience only among young men. At the same time, Fox received a good fee of $5 million for participation. In April 2009, filming began for the superhero western Jonah Hex, in which Megan got the role of the dangerous beauty Lila Black. Her main partners on the set were Josh Brolin, John Malkovich, and Michael Fassbender. Unfortunately, the film failed miserably at the box office. Houston Film Critics Society awarded it the name of the worst film of the year, and Golden Raspberry honored the project with two nominations at once, Worst Actress and Worst Screen Couple. Megan's work was not limited to cinema alone. From 2007 to 2009, she took part in the voice acting of video games on Transformers, voicing, as you may have guessed, her cinematic character, Michaela Baines. In 2010, Megan starred in Eminem and Rihanna's music video, Love the Way You Lie. It cannot be said that 2010 has changed the situation a lot. The level of pictures in which the actress appeared was, to put it mildly, weak. Megan's partner in passion play, Mickey Rourke, described this film as another terrible movie. But the actress enjoyed working with Mickey Rourke so much that she even got a tattoo in his honor. He's so genuine and so sweet and so talented. I just love him to death. I actually got a tattoo that is sort of in honor of him. It's on my ribs. In general, the actress loves tattoos very much. In one of the interviews, she jokingly or seriously said, All my boyfriends are required to have one, and if they don't have one yet, I make them get a tattoo of my name or my face. At the moment, the actress has about 10 tattoos. On Megan's back is a quote from Shakespeare's King Lear, We will all laugh at gilded butterflies. On the right side, you can notice a Nietzsche quote, And those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music, dedicated to Mickey Rourke. But perhaps the most famous tattoo is the portrait of Marilyn Monroe on her right hand, which Megan made in her youth. Fox adored Monroe from early childhood. After reviewing all the films with her participation, Megan sincerely admired the sex symbol of the 50s. But now, having grown up, she decided to get rid of the tattoo, considering that in this way she would protect herself from the negativity that accompanied Marilyn in the last years of her bright, but such a short life. I was stubborn and I thought I was going to love it forever, or that it would be a book of my life, all the things I loved when I was young. It's not that way at all. I'm removing it. It is a negative character, as she suffered from personality disorders and was bipolar. I do not want to attract this kind of negative energy in my life. Meanwhile, the popularity of the actress did not fade. She continued to be invited to promising and not very promising projects. But she was frankly unlucky with the films. In 2010, perhaps the main Fox project finally came to its logical conclusion. 
After getting engaged again in 2010, Fox and Green finally officially became husband and wife. The wedding took place on June 24th at the Four Seasons Resort Hotel on the island of Maui in Hawaii. The ceremony was a secret, attended only by relatives and friends of the newlyweds. The lovers exchanged vows right on the shore of the Pacific Ocean. The witness at the ceremony was Brian's son, eight-year-old Cassius. He and his father were waiting for the bride on the sand by the shore. Megan appeared barefoot in a snow-white wedding dress, and in her hands she had a bouquet of white roses and gardenias. I have never been so sure of anything in my life as I am in marriage with you. This is a great start to the amazing family life that we are going to have," Brian said in his wedding vow. The newly married family spent their honeymoon in the same hotel in Hawaii. After two years, their first son, Noah, was born. But back to the filmography. Appearing in the mediocre comedies Friends with Kid and This Is 40, Jude Apatow, Megan was unable to raise her status and remained more of a media personality than a serious actress. Partly due to this status in 2012, she got a cameo in Sasha Baron Cohen's The Dictator and voiced Louis Lane in Robot Chicken. After the success of Transformers, the media labeled Megan a sex symbol and the next Angelina Jolie, and this did not give Fox a chance to develop as an actress. The roles of sexy girls in revealing outfits only rooted her in that role. Fox herself is very skeptical about the comparison with Angelina. In an interview, the actress said, People compare me to Angelina Jolie, and she's so serious and stoic. I'm the opposite. When I do interviews, I say things that I think are hysterical, but because we live in a world of sound bites, you're not allowed to have a sense of humor. Sarcasm doesn't translate in print at all, and neither does self-deprecating humor. I'm not a tigress like Angelina. Of course, people want me to be, but I want to be the contradiction of that. In 2013, Megan starred in a Brahma beer commercial for Brazilian television, but that was not the main event of that year for the actress. Unexpectedly, for everyone, Fox and Bay bury the hatchet and reunite in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where the actress gets a very prominent role of reporter April O'Neil. In a conversation with journalists, Megan admitted, I've always loved Michael. We've had our battles in the past, but even when I've been really outspoken about difficulties we've had, I've always followed up by saying that I have a particular affinity to him. He can be very vulnerable, and he's very likable and lovable. I've always been very vocal about that as well. But sometimes, we clash, because we both have very willful, powerful personalities. Despite a lot of negative reviews from critics, the film collected a good box office. With a budget of $150 million, it was able to earn almost $500 million. In 2015, Fox got the role of Amelia Del Thanis in the video game from Plarium, Stormfall, Rise of Balor, and in October of the same year, it was confirmed that Fox would temporarily replace Zooey Deschanel in the television sitcom New Girl. Megan convincingly played the role of Reagan Lucas in the fifth and sixth seasons of the series. Her performance was warmly received and got positive reviews from critics. Fox got the role of April O'Neil in the sequel of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles again in 2016, but alas, the sequel did not become so successful commercially. The budget grew, and fees on the contrary decreased, and by as much as two times compared to the first part. You've all probably heard that Megan's appearance has been repeatedly subjected to surgery. It's true. Fox admitted in an interview that she suffers from body dysmorphic disorder. That is, she constantly worries about her appearance and cannot perceive it adequately. The first changes in her life occurred at the age of 21. Megan decided to correct her nose. She changed the shape of her nostrils, removed the hump, and lifted the tip. After that, there were three more similar operations until the nose became perfect for her. This was followed by a gradual lip augmentation, then the cheekbones and chin were changed. In 2007, the actress increased breasts for the first time. Megan Fox did not stop there and continued to improve her appearance. But one way or another, Megan is without a doubt an example where such surgeries are made by masters of their craft and, at the moment, without overkill. We would really like the actress not to lose her sense of proportion and taste in the future, because there are many unsuccessful examples after such surgeries. Megan herself urges young girls not to rush with plastic surgery, but first of all to understand the reasons for their desires, to be conscious and mature in making such serious decisions. I would encourage anyone to first speak with a therapist to try and figure out where this want comes from, because a lot of times it's not related to your teeth, or your nose, or your chin. The surgery is not going to alleviate that insecurity for you. If, then, you feel, this is something that I want to do, then do it. It's amazing that we have the technology to do the stuff that we do. 
Before we move on to the latest news about Megan, we suggest that you click on the subscribe button and the bell to not miss the release of new videos about your favorite celebrities. We have a lot of interesting and inspiring stories in our plans. Subscribe, and we'll continue. In 2019, Megan Fox played in the detective fiction film Above the Shadows with Olivia Thirlby and Alan Richson. The movie was directed by Claudia Myers. The film won the Audience Award at the Brooklyn Film Festival. In the same year, Fox appeared in the film Zeroville by James Franco. Filming of the movie began back in 2014, but due to the bankruptcy of the company that produced the project, it was released much later. The film got negative reviews from critics, box office receipts were very low, and as a bonus, it was nominated for three Golden Raspberry Awards. The actress was also seen in a couple of action film shots for various streaming services, but we don't want to focus on them. We'll just say that the ratings of these films are very disappointing. Fox does not stop getting the offers of the sexy girls, escorts, and strippers roles, but she dreams of something completely different. I like playing psychos, so any kind of mentally disturbed female is fun for me. Megan's motherhood has seriously affected the attitude to the choice of roles. The actress is trying to distance herself from her media image as much as possible. I'm going to be more cautious about choosing films because I'm already thinking about when he's in school and his friends are going to be showing him my photo shoots with me in a bikini and he's going to be terrified. So that will deter me from making some of the choices I made before. The 20th year for Megan began with an appearance in the family comedy Think Like a Dog with Josh Duhamel. The film was released by the premium VOD service without showing on the big screens. In 2021, Fox appeared in three thrillers, Midnight in the Switchgrass with Bruce Willis, Till Death based on a script by Jason Carvey, and Night Teeth by Adam Randall. The first two films had a slightly higher status. The posters could be seen in some cinemas in Europe, so perhaps you can call it a local success, but Night Teeth was released on Netflix, habitually bypassing the big screens. A year later, Fox, along with Oscar Isaac and Andy Garcia, starred in the black comedy Big Gold Brick, which became the directional debut of Brian Petsis. The audience did not really like the picture. Its quirkiness and the desire to be unlike anything else could not make it interesting. In May 2020, Brian Austin Green informed the public that, after almost 10 years of marriage, he and Fox broke up. It was officially issued a year later. During their marriage, they had three sons in 2012, 2014, and 2016. After the birth of her first child, Megan plunged headlong into motherhood, and just 10 months after that, the couple announced their second pregnancy. Later in an interview, Megan admitted that none of their children were planned, that in this matter the couple relied on fate and the will of chance. The second pregnancy turned out to be harder for the actress than the first, while Fox managed to act and take care of her eldest son. After the birth of the second child, a crisis came in Megan and Brian's relationship. The couple's relationship deteriorated greatly, and at the end of the summer of 2015, it became known that the actress filed for divorce and demanded joint custody of their two sons. As we remember, in addition to common children, Green also has a son from a previous marriage. He was a full-fledged member of the family. Megan raised him as her own. One day, she admitted to journalists, I am a stepmother to the fullest extent. I have looked after Cassius since he was three, and he has no memory of life without me. For some reason, no one wants to look at me that way, but I am responsible for him and I've never struggled with that, from bedtime stories to the school run." The couple did not talk about the reasons for the divorce, but their entourage said that Megan was simply tired of the fact that her husband constantly tried to limit her and wanted her to spend more time at home with the children, while Fox herself dreamed of acting more and engaging in self-realization. By the way, Megan has never restricted her children in anything. She allows them to express themselves in any way. She allows her son Noah to wear women's dresses to school and seems to be trying to be as different as possible from her own parents, who were very strict. It's like UFC fight night all day, every day. The actress once joked, talking about her children. Forks are weapons. We need to live in a padded cell for everyone to be safe. Already during the divorce process, it became clear that Megan is expecting a third child from Brian. Fox's pregnancy changed the plans of the star couple. For the sake of the children's happiness, they decided to give their relationship another chance. Megan took the documents from the court, and together with Brian, they began to rebuild a relationship that almost collapsed. I don't live in illusions. I'm just trying to live and enjoy what I have. Some people think that divorce is a cause of frustration, but it's not. Divorce can be positive. We have three wonderful children. We had, and still have, a wonderful relationship. We're just working on the relationship day after day. 
But the story of this couple came to an end. Brian said that he and Megan agreed to maintain warm, friendly relations for the sake of their three sons and planned to spend family holidays and vacations together. The actor also denied rumors that their breakup with his wife is somehow connected with Colson Baker. Already in June 2020, Megan and musician Colson Baker, better known by the stage name Machine Gun Kelly, told the public about their relationship. By the way, a month before this event, Machine Gun Kelly released a video for the song Bloody Valentine, in which Megan played a role. So fans who saw the clip could even then think about the fact that all this is for a reason. The acquaintance of the future lovers took place on the set of the film Midnight in the Switchgrass, in which they played the main roles. Later, Megan admitted more than once in her interviews that she immediately felt attracted to her partner. I could feel that some wild shit was going to happen to me from that meeting, but I wasn't yet sure what. I just felt it, like, deep in my soul, that something was going to come from that. For me, this feeling is comparable to a flash, when a soul has ascended into a high enough level that it can be split into two different bodies at the same time. So we're actually two halves of the same soul, I think. Colson was also excited about the joint project with Megan. I didn't know what love was until I met her eyes. That's when I thought, wow. It was my first experience when I was open to love. I, in fact, never believed that something like this really exists. By the way, the musician noticed Fox at school and dreamed of dating her. Moreover, he got a tattoo with the logo of Transformers in the first parts of which Megan played the main role. In early 2022, Fox announced her engagement to the musician, and since then, Megan has been appearing more and more often in the projects of her soulmate. So, in 2022, there were as many as two films with her participation, the screenwriter of which was Baker. These are the drama Taurus and the romantic comedy Good Morning. And if Taurus received average reviews, then Good Morning was perceived negatively. It should be understood that films of this kind rarely claim the laurels of masterpieces of world cinema and are made more for their fans. Although, who knows, perhaps years later they will be named classics. Such examples have also happened in history. Now Megan can confidently be called a successful model. She regularly shoots for men's magazines, has a huge number of advertising contracts, and seems to have come to terms with her far from the main role in the world of cinema. Recently, the actress became a co-owner of the Fredericks of Hollywood trademark. After buying a stake in this brand and becoming its creative director, Fox decided to make inexpensive but beautiful underwear models for women, which she then presents herself. Megan's next acting project, apparently, will be the action movie The Expendables 4, where she will be with Jason Statham, Dolph Lundgren, and rapper Curtis Jackson, better known by the nickname 50 Cent. Her sometimes provocative interviews still attract huge media attention. In numerous interviews, she has repeatedly talked about her bisexuality. The actress sincerely believes that all people are born with the ability to be attracted to persons of both sexes. Fox's excessive self-criticism of her appearance, replicated in the media, may no longer be so dangerous for her. After all, now there is a person next to her who sincerely supports her in everything. After watching joint interviews, it seems that they have a really healthy relationship and that they are able to help each other achieve new creative successes. Colson gets along well with Megan's children. The rapper was often noticed in the company of the actress and her sons, and Fox often spends time with his 12-year-old daughter, Casey, who was born in a relationship between the musician and Emma Cannon. Megan Fox fulfilled her childhood dream of becoming an actress, and although she is still not limited to one job on the set, we still look forward to seeing Megan in new films. Regardless of the quality of her film work, she still has a lot of loyal fans, and it was Transformers that contributed to this to a large extent. If you want to learn more about the birth of this famous franchise, click on the icon that appeared on your screen. In our video, we talked about the ups and downs of the cinematic universe that made Megan Fox a star. Why are the last parts not as good as the first ones? What difficulties did the creators of Transformers face? Follow the link and watch. And remember that your support is very important to us, so we will be grateful for your like. There was Biographer with you. See you very soon.